हरिस्तुति श्लोका थर्टीन सर्व दृष्ट् स्वात्म युक्त जगदे तद दृष्ट्वात्मा चज सर्वजनेशु सर्वात्मकोस्मी विदुर्य जनहृत्स्थम तम संसारध्वांतनाशम हरिमीडे एतत्सर्व जगत युक्त स्वात्म दृष्ट् आत्मच अज दृष्ट् सर्वजनेशु जनहृत्स्थम सर्वात्मा एक अस्मी यम विदु तम संसारध्वांतनाशम हरिमीडे एतत्सर्व जगत दिस् होल वर्ल विच इज बीइंग एक्सपीरियंस्ड एंड सीन बाय द सेंस परसेप्शन युक्त बाय अ मेथड ऑफ लॉजिकल रीसनिंग लॉजिकल एनालिसिस स्वात्म दृष्ट् दिस् होल वर्ल ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इज सीन विथिन वन ओन सेल्फ एंड देन आत्मानम च दैट ओन सेल्फ is evam by this method of enquiry ajam drishtva is understood as brahman what kind of brahman the brahman who has no birth ajam sarva janeshu and then in all the beings jana hrutstham here hrut means the intellect buddhi so this brahman is understood to be present in the intellect of all the beings then further this brahman is sarvatma is the essential living principle of all the beings and that brahman ekah asmi is the only one and that i am iti yam viduhu thus one who is known tam samsara dhwanta vinasham harim ide i worship that hari the destroyer of ignorance which causes samsara now we will look at the detailed meaning all the upanishads they teach and establish the identity of brahman and jiva the taitiriya upanishad says satyam gnanam anantam brahma which means brahman is infinite existence anantam satyam or you can say limitless existence further it is anantam gnanam limitless consciousness so like this after explaining the nature of brahman after giving the swarupa lakshana for brahman the upanishad says sa yaschayam purushe yaschasau adityate sa ekah with this statement the upanishad points out that the jiva is not separate from that brahman it's saying essentially jiva and brahman are the same it means atma sah yah cha here purusha is atma so that atma sah yah cha which is in the jiva so in that portion sa yash chayam purushe purusha means the individual being jiva so the essential atma which is in this jiva and yaschasau aditye that which is the content of the sun or the truth of the sun aditya is one only is the same essentially the truth of jiva is brahman then similarly chandogya upanishad says sadeva saumya idam agra asit ekameva advitiyam saumya means o young man 
this world idam this world as we see it with so many different names and forms a grey before it came into manifestation sateva it was existence only sateva asit it was only existence and it existed how ekameva advitiyam as one without a second like this with this definition of brahman the upanishad establishes the identity of brahman with jiva or the jiva and brahman are the same iti then further there is another uh, mahavakyam tattvam asi tat means that atma or that brahman tvam you jiva you means you the jiva asi are so you jiva are that brahman only iti this re- real identity of jiva as brahman is established in the form of a dialogue between father aruni and son shwetaketu in the upanishad like this brahman which is not different from jiva is praised in this verse sarvam sarvam means viyad adikam all the elements in their gross form and the subtle form space air fire water earth then this jagat etat means this world which we are experiencing as many many forms and names where are all these objects upon doing a little enquiry into the nature of the self all these objects will be understood as those which abide in the consciousness and that consciousness is the self then further swatmani yuktya a logical analysis of this world of objects including the body mind sense complex will reveal that these do not have any reality of their own in other words no independent existence can be seen for all these objects now without consciousness chaitanyam the objects are all jada vastu now here jada is a technical word it doesn't mean lifeless as in inert so it means anything dependent on consciousness for its uh, validity or for itself to be known that is known as a jada vastu objects by themselves are inert because they are dependent they are not self revealing so objects by themselves are said to be jada in the shloka yuktya is a word which implies a methodology of enquiry into the self a reasoning is done anything seen is an object which is perceived by the senses so any object by itself is inert it is known to the perceiver only because the sat chit existence consciousness is present with the object that's why the object is cognized then the seen that is s e e n objects known or perceived they belong to the vyavaharika satta the transactional order of reality in other words seen depends upon something else something else to reveal its reveal its own identity the ultimate seer or knower or perceiver of objects belongs to paramarthika satta absolute order of reality in other words paramarthika satta means the ultimate seer is self revealing 
and also reveals everything else. It is independent. Now this kind of understanding leads us to know that the seer seen cannot be associated because both belong to different orders of reality. So they cannot be associated. So then the question arises, then how is everything seen, perceived and understood? So then Shastra says, Chiti Adhyastattvameva Sambandhaha. The nature of everything seen is superimposed on the seer. So this superimposition is the connection. Otherwise, the objective world cannot be known at all. So, the word drishtva means understanding that this whole world, which is of many objective perceptions, they are known as real only because of superimposing the changing nature of the scene on the unchanging ultimate seer. And what is that seer? The ultimate seer is consciousness. Now here, let us understand a little bit what is seer-scene relationship. This is a methodology used to unfold the identity of Jiva and Brahma by, uh, you know, bringing out the meaning of uh, Brahman itself. Now, the external world which has varieties of many objects which are all seen, by whom is it seen? When you ask that question to yourself, then the answer is, of course, the eye is the one which is seeing all the uh, forms. So, I is the seer with respect to the external objects which are seen. Now the status of this seer for the I, it changes. When does it change? Upon understanding that the I by itself cannot see without the backup of the mind. So with respect to the mind, the I becomes the seen and the mind is the seer. So then further enquiry will take us to understand that this mind itself is known in the form of many different thought manifestations. And these are known to another awareing principle. Even these thoughts are known to something else. So, with respect to the awarer of the mind, the mind becomes the seen object and then the awarer is the ultimate seer. Now, the nature of the ultimate seer is such that it cannot be known by any sense perception. The nature of this ultimate seer being that which is unchanging or invariable at all times. Which means the ultimate seer is self-revealing and it reveals every other sense perception. So this self-revealing nature of the seer takes us to know that this is what is known by chit, consciousness. And it is this consciousness which inheres in all sense perceptions. Otherwise, the sense perceptions cannot be known. Then further, Kaivalya Upanishad says, Puratraye kridati yascha jivaha tatastu jatam sakalam vichitram. The jiva, that is the individual being, has these three experiences. The jagrat avastha, waker's experience. Then swapna avastha, means the dreamer's experience. And then sushupti avastha, which is 
द डीप स्लीप एक्सपीरियंस सो पुरत्रय मीन्स दीज थ्री स्टेजेस ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस विच कम एंड गो नाउ दीज डिफरेंसेस आर नोन ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ द इनवेरिएबल नेचर ऑफ चित द कॉन्शियसनेस नाउ वी नो दैट the waker's experience ends when the dreamer's experience begins the dreamer's experience ends where the deep sleeper's experience begins then again the deep sleeper's experience ends to the waker's experience so like this these experiences are continuously changing so then how are these known so we get the answer they are known because of the presence of one invariable chaitanyam which is known as the awarer or the ultimate seer or consciousness principle and that is described as ajam so ajam means paramatma or brahman and the word ajam itself means one who is unborn always known as though directly perceived aparokshataya so and what else is this ajam it is also the anubhuyamanam atmanam cha it is this ajam which is the self i the continuously existent ultimate seer in other words it is the original consciousness then where is this chaitanyam present within the being so the next word in the shloka says sarva janeshu in all the beings which are born in time within their antahkarana upadhi this is present that is within the mind how is it present within the mind pratibimbitataya as reflected consciousness it is present in other words the invariable is always existent as original consciousness and that is reflected in the mind of the beings because the mind is very closely associated and that makes it possible to perceive or know all the changing experiences drishtva means understanding this fact about the self aham now here at this point there is another shruti pramana which says yo yonim yonim adhitishthatyekah this is uh, from shvetashvatara upanishad which means that sachidanandam brahman alone presides over all the modifications of the mind yonim yonim means the modifications of the mind and adhitishthati adhitishthati means presiding over is ekah this one consciousness alone in the form of sakshi or witness as witness consciousness now another very beautiful analogy to help understand that the one and the same brahman inheres in everything is a mantram from kathopanishad which says agnir yathaiko bhuvanam pratishtho roopam roopam pratiroopo babhuva ekas tatha sarvabhutantaratma roopam roopam pratiroopo babhuva it is the one atma which is in all the beings and that assumes various forms roopam roopam pratiroopah babhuva it it assumes various forms in keeping with every form of the being and how is that the drishtanta analogy given here is just as one formless fire principle 
ekah agnihi yatha that one formless fire principle which is in the universe it assumes various forms in keeping with the different objects of burning like logs etc uh, and these are of various sizes so according to the size this uh, agni will take a different form um, then this aham i is understood as sarvatma means sarva swarupaha as the very essential content of the elements and all the beings like as though it has entered into all the beings in the form of the life principle is this atma which is sat existence chit consciousness so therefore eko asmi iti ekah asmi iti all that is here is only one atma the self in this form one who knows yam that atma which is not different from jiva as residing in janahritstham the intellect of every being and eternally present in this way yam viduhu that which is known uh, here at this point there is a shruti vakya brahadaranyaka upanishad which says yat sakshad aparokshat brahma that brahman who is known and understood here and now right now as that which is continuously present and how how continuously present without any other thoughts and impressions that is in the form of a uninterrupted flow of thoughts understanding that it is this brahman which is always present as consciousness knowing this tam samsara dhvanta vinasham hari mede such a advitiyam brahman as hari i offer worship to like this in this verse acharya offers worship to that brahman who is not different from i aham a jeeva or a individual being so the maha vakyam aham brahma asmi is the implied meaning of this shloka sarvam drishtva swatmani yuktya jagade tad drishtvaatmanam chaivam ajam sarvajaneshu sarvaatmaiko smiti viduryam janahritstham tam samsara dhvanta vinasham harimide namaste